All right, welcome back to another legal investigations. I'm Jake Knight, gaming lawyer to service, <laughs> real life lawyer as well. So yeah, we'll be looking into something. I would say uh, it's important to uh, remind again, as well as add a few more things in regards to talking about agreements, uh, specifically for you know uh, artists, uh, whether it's uh, for VTubers or not VTubers. Anyone that does, you know, uh, this sort of services, most likely it's a digital format, you know, digital artwork as well as anything in between. Either it's uh, animation or live 2D, 3D models, um, simple portraits, anything. Uh, I would say uh, hopefully that we will be able, this sort of, a, uh, this legal investigation, this seminar, will be able to cover most of uh, everyone's needs, at, at least basic needs, right? And uh, to give everyone a simple understanding of why this is necessary, all right? So, and uh, hopefully it's going to be a short one uh, because I can't really say, I, I don't know, but I'm trying to make this as simple as possible so that it, it doesn't, you know, become, it, it doesn't become too complicated. I don't think it, there's, there's really a need to be complicated, right? Though I do have to emphasize certain things uh, so that people understand, you know, uh, why. Uh, a lot of times people don't know why. Uh, then when when I, I'm trying to, you know, explain things, trying to educate people on, on, on certain matters. So this is going to be more or less uh, my my reminder or kind of like my caution to people P please 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 don't ignore agreements don't simply think that you know as long as you communicate uh what uh, what you are able to provide what your prices are and all that and your clients what your client wants is sufficient because at uh doing any of these things that involves money you have to be clear you have to be serious right it's not a small sum of money right or regardless whether it's a small smart sum of money it is involving money it involves a lot of work time and and a lot of a lot of other considerations as well so yeah that's not something i would say uh you should uh, not something that a lot of people should take it as casual right non uh it's just casual dealing uh though that is the main uh main requirement main necessi necessity for a lot of freelance artists is that they want to just settle a a uh, art commission as quick as possible get the money as quick as possible and don't have to you know be bogged down by too many terms and conditions uh, and obligations and whatnot but i would say still still uh, if if you i don't know <laughs> the older you get the more you understand why all this you know quote-unquote bureaucracy is in this uh, processes that you have to do is necessary uh, but I'll try to I, I've done it uh, down to a few points so I, right over here that um, why artists need or you know as well as clients both I, I would say both parties need to understand why uh, art commission agreements are necessary why why do we need them and how do we you know draft them and when when how when and how and why all that we'll, we'll talk about all right but first we'll talk about why so the first point i put put out over here is that it's useful for both legal and non-legal purposes so a lot of people might think that you know agreements is only necessary when like you're working uh with a company like you you need an employment contract yeah so you need an agreement over there or when you're buying a car or when you're buying a house or maybe even renting a renting a room or anything that like that requires an agreement you will probably yeah uh, you understand why because it has to go through certain uh 
actual legal processes to make sure they are legitimate and all that and legally binding. But uh, that is not necessarily the only thing agreements are useful for, right? Yeah, uh, it, if someone breaches a contract, uh, you can take legal actions against them to recover any sort of compensation or take, uh, have any sort of a, pursue any sort of a remedy uh, to, to revert back to the position that you were in before that breach happened and all that stuff. But, 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 it can also be used for non-legal purposes, right? It, how exactly, right? Uh, well, <laughs> The most basic reason would be basic basic purpose for a agreement is that everything is written so this leads to the second and third uh and all, everything else i would say uh the reasons why a, a, an agreement or contract is necessary right so it's a vital evidence for any disputes that may occur right disputes you know when you're arguing, when an artist or a client is arguing with each other or something that maybe it was not, uh, maybe the client didn't want the, wanted this art commission to be like this way, or uh, the artist doesn't want the client to do something with the art. Uh, either way, there was going to be some sort of dispute happening between uh, the parties, and it's not likely going to be, of course, you know, uh, both part. I, I would say. Very, un very highly unlikely that you know this sort of disputes will become a legal dispute, as in they will they will hire lawyers in that and then try to argue over it. Uh, but yes, it is useful for any dispute, even if for just the things I have spoken of. So if there is such a dispute, such an argument that has uh, been uh, brought up, you you have one thing, right? You have the agreement where where I hope everything has been stated inside and would cover whatever dispute that you're having right the the argument that uh, your art commission shouldn't be done in this way and all that hopefully your agreement has terms for that to say that no there's nothing saying that this isn't supposed to be like that it is exactly like this and that and such this is the requested specific specifications the details of this art commission is all inside this agreement so there's no dispute about it uh, there's nothing to uh, for the other party to say in the con uh, yeah in the contrary right in the opposite of what is being uh, being uh, accused of being argued about right then of course we have the clear and written obligations by both our parties so inside terms and conditions both parties should uh, understand fully what they are supposed to do at from the start to the end Right, an artist should be able to, uh, even if let's say you know an artist who's been doing this uh, freelance work for years, uh, has a lot of experience and knows when to start, how to to begin a art commission and end an art commission. It's not necessary for, uh, for the client. Client doesn't necessarily uh, commission a lot of work, so they need some sort of a uh, you know clear understanding as to what. The artists would be doing as well as what they themselves have to do right so a an agreement would be very helpful in clearing up or in, in making this clear right there won't be like uh, i'm not sure if this uh, if the artist would have would, know, would inform me of if uh how how much has been progressed how much has been completed with the artwork or is there if there's anything I can do to you know if if possible to request further edits or um, maybe even uh, change the entire art commission entirely into something different? I don't know. Uh, all of that can be put in an agreement, right? Uh, for the artist to to specify again, this this agreement, of course, uh, they are not for the client. To draft themselves. Most of the times, these agreements are drafted by the uh, artist. It's a default uh, the default agreement that uh, everyone should be able to read, and anyone who wants to commission this artist would have to follow these terms and conditions. And if let's say there's something that uh, a client 
not is not necessarily uh, agreeable or doesn't really understand what the terms and conditions says about. Again, there's not there, we have a venue to discuss things to uh, peacefully and civilly, but because agreements are not necessarily fixed, they are not like you can't cannot change them at all or anything like that. Unless it's some very important term to the artist, yeah, you can't change those. But for, for the most aspects, agreements are should be uh, up to negotiations, open for negotiations, right? Uh, to 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 cater to every other client, it's it shouldn't be restrictive in a sense. It shouldn't be stagnant, fixed. And no, if, if you don't agree to these terms and conditions, and you can't hire me, you can't commission me, right? Th that is not the purpose of this agreement. Agreements are a place for people to look at and if there's anything they want to change, like either the artist or the client, based on what is being requested, it's very... That should be encouraged, right? That should be encouraged. Then, of course, we have to... An agreement... Very, very, uh, one of the basic purposes, reasons why you have it is to avoid misunderstandings and misassumptions, right? Uh, it's easy to say, I want this artwork to be done. And, and then the artist will tell you, yeah, okay, we can do this and I'll uh, provide you the price and all that and be on, be on with each other. But that's the thing. Sometimes, a, if the art commission is not that simple, if it's more complicated in the sense that it involves commercial purposes, they want to use this artwork for something for their business, for their VTuber content creation, whatever it is, um, there's going to be more different kinds of use for the art commission, right? So we need to cover that as well. We need to make sure that everyone is on the same page as in they are, everyone is fine with how this artwork is going to be used so there's that as well and also how uh, every uh, have other steps during this you know commissioning uh, is done with, uh, without any misunderstanding right like uh, whether there is going to be a refund if uh, if the artwork could not be fit cannot be finished for whatever reason or how much uh, how is the payment going to be done is it going to be paid at the start of the commission or only at the end of the commission all that has to be figured out right put in writing all that and again if if anything is requires to be uh, changed in the future everyone can discuss everyone can can negotiate again okay everyone can talk about it again right anyways so that's avoiding misunderstandings and avoiding misassumptions right then we also have provide an agreement should provide some sort of solution and remedy uh, when something goes wrong right and i'm not going to say that uh it's going to there's a high chance of uh uh at a at a Commission is going to have a problem. There's going to someone will be breaching it, but it's just in case, right? This is this is something that is just in case. It's like again, uh, agreement or more or less uh, is something like a seat belt that you wear in cars. You wear it not because there's a high chance you will uh, you're getting into an accident, but it is it is a high chance that if you do get in an accident, you will get injured yourself or worse. So. That's the thing with agreement as well. If something happens to you, uh, whether it's intentionally, whether it's by accident, you have an agreement to tell you what is what is the proper solution to it, what is the agreed solution and remedies to it, right? Both parties have have agreed that if this happens, if someone breaches the contract, uh, the agreement, this is this is what will be, be happening, and nobody can. Uh, uh, how do you say complain against that uh, solution that is being taken taken again uh, taken for uh, so yeah those are I would say the main points for anyone thinking of uh, 
considering, right, still on the fence, why um, agreements is important for artists. Very simple. And by the, just having an agreement covers all these problems, all, all these issues, right? So recently, recently, uh, there's this thing that has uh, been brought to my attention that freelance artists don't, again, uh, don't really understand uh, where, w why an agreement is necessary. And there's several reasons, right? Several reasons why I've, I've been, I saw this. So this is a tweet that I made uh, explaining this exactly. I think it's about a couple weeks ago or still, uh, yeah, March 21st, not Man, I always think that time, uh, <laughs> when I made this, it has been some time, but no, it's only <laughs> two to three weeks ago. Oh my goodness. But anyways, so yeah, uh, over here, I put up, put up saying that some people argue that artist agreements are just social agreements, that they are not legally binding. They are not legally enforceable. So this is something that is very... Um, how do you say incorrect incorrect right practically right practically speaking yes you don't find uh, artists freelance especially freelance artists uh, having clients sue them or uh, artists suing clients vice versa but it is not to say that because both parties do not take actions at all that the agreement that the, the agreement artist agreement is not legally binding if both parties relied on the terms and conditions in it right uh whether or not there's express words that oh this agreement will be legally binding or not it, it doesn't matter as long as people are referring to a to 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 something to to progress into the to complete the art commission to complete the transaction to fulfill their obligations it has to come out somewhere right you and a client hey that's an oof take take that by that person <laughs> hello nemo uh so yeah you, that is going you, you know a client an artist ha, uh, agreeing with each other to do something has to be based off from somewhere right you must have messaged them some in a, in a direct message on twitter on discord or by email however it is you have both of you have communicated with each other what you want to do and what you can provide right and what the exchange would be all that is done of course you know if you don't have an agreement you're doing all that through con a conversation a conversation could become legally binding as well. It can become a can become a contract. So first of all, you know, um, I have to clarify: an agreement is not necessarily a contract, but all agreements are contracts, <laughs> in a sense that um, how everyone pursues uh, hires artists for art commissions. It, the the facts of making a of some something turn, turning something turning a conversation turning an agreement into a contract will make it into a contract there are you know there are basic basic principles of how a contract becomes legally binding yeah? an agreement becomes legally binding but uh from uh from i think i've explained here All right yeah when there are no express signatures or written words of accepting an agreement one party only needs to prove they have reasonably believed the terms of the agreement to be legally binding and have relied on them these are like very rough explanation paraphrasing of the uh, legal principles of how a contract forms how about verbal contract do they need to be recorded for it to be a contract now that's a good question Nemo uh, whether a verbal agreement, a verbal uh, 
conversation with each other to to do something that involves exchanging of goods you know either for our case for our context exchanging artwork for money right in print or in uh, in legal principles uh even a verbal conversation uh is can be legally binding right you verbally promised them to do something promise the other the other person to do something and the other person promises you to pay you for doing that something that is like the very very core uh, very origins of how a contract forms because it, uh, in <laughs> during the uh medieval times yes contracts has has been around during the medieval times already uh there's no such thing as you know written contracts most people are not literal uh, literate they can't they don't know how to write and all that but for for a society to work there has to be some sort of a law uh that is able to both people ha are able to rely on so during that time uh, verbal agreements uh are are like very common and have uh, enforceability over them but in our modern society the problem with verbal agreements right everyone understands it's very difficult to prove <laughs> it's very difficult to prove so that's why uh yeah nemo if you're asking do you have to record um a verbal con verbal agreement uh that would be the best <laughs> Because at the end, the important thing is how do you prove that a an, a verbal agreement exists, right? Without any proof, without any evidence uh, of of such a conversation happening, it's very it's difficult to say that you your only uh, 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 how do you say your own you the only thing you can rely on is that things have happened, right? Uh, if if you do, if you didn't record any verbal uh, verbal conversations with the other person, right? But you actually did provide something to that person, right? Let's uh, we are talking about if you are the artist, right? If you provide the artwork to that person, can't really imagine that you're providing this artwork for free, right? <laughs> Unless circumstances show that or uh, something like your family or something really really close family and the only thing we can base off whether you're doing this for free or not is how you have been interacting with each other which is really flimsy really flimsy argument uh and probably bias as well in, in terms of like saying to uh that you're doing this for money right i mean is it could turn into a he say she say they say yes uh, at the end it we're just uh, talking about this uh, theoretically is that yeah uh if 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 ever such a case comes up in court let's like say you want to sue the other person for not uh, uh keeping their promise to you which that promise is only in verbal form very difficult unless you know you have a witness uh you have a witness your that conversation is recorded somehow somewhere so yeah but <laughs> Uh, again, most likely uh, the courts will 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 say there is no contract, really, and if anything, they can only base on what has happened as the as the uh, indication of a terms and conditions, right? But that's it. That's it, right? Regardless, if you have an actual agreement, like like I said. Uh, uh, the things that you do, the actions that you do between a client as well as the artist, definitely, definitely shows that a some sort of a business or legal relationship between each other, right? You you have as it's impossible that you suddenly want to make art, artwork for your client without having any no trace of communication between each other, right? You probably have to talk about how. How money is being how money is to be paid right how much is going to be paid using what method right when to pay all that has to be somewhere during that conversation and on the other side the uh, on the conversation of making the artwork as it has to be things about uh the specifications 
what uh, uh, what references is are you, are you what's description what references have the client given to you to make this artwork what um, has, has the client told you what purpose it is used for all that stuff there has to be a trace of it and because there is this back and forth communication is it is automatically assumed that you have some sort of contractual relationship with between each other it's just that the terms and conditions is all spread it out in the conversation mm -hmm. i think it's still based on goodwill but still need to make some groundwork rules still yes uh that's the thing it's if you don't have like a like one document <laughs> One document to say all of the all these things. We humans are flawed. A lot of times we we misremember things. We don't uh, don't don't remember saying what we've said in in the past. And we and when things happen that they don't like, we don't like it uh, or don't agree to it. We we'll say, hey, I, I didn't like I didn't told you to do this. Why are you doing this? Then you will be like. Because you don't have a, a, a main document to, to, to indicate all of these things, you'll, you'll be scrambling yourself to see if you actually agreed to this in your, con in your uh, how do you say, uh, conversations with, uh, between each other, right? And if you don't find it, oh no, then you're, you're really in a bad situation. You, don't, uh, you couldn't find it whether or not it is true or uh, whether or not it is true that something you have broken some sort of a promise uh, uh, from uh, against the uh, other person. You don't know. You, you might have believed, yeah, uh, I did something wrong. And I'm, I'm going to correct that mistake. That is that is the problem that we tr are trying to avoid. We don't want to have misunderstandings with each other. By having an agreement, everything is said in one spot. It, if there's a disagreement, there's, fair. there's a dispute between each other, we all just look at that one document and we find out uh, if it covers or not what, it, what we are trying to argue. If it covers, there's no problem because both parties have already agreed to whatever is stated inside this, uh, this agreement, right? So they can't, how do you say, the back away? Uh, they can't bullshit their way uh, into something that we both parties haven't agreed to so yeah that's one thing right again it, it doesn't matter if a, a agreement yeah, if you have an agreement it doesn't matter if you say it's legally binding or not both parties agree, uh, rely on it right it, it's it's sufficient uh, right in uh, legal uh, from a legal perspective it is enforceable it's legally binding right and the other thing i do want to mention is yeah uh, it, uh this is a few other things you you probably should take note is yeah you don't want to be uh don't want to think that uh, because you don't have any use any legal use for it right you won't as i'm not uh i'm not dumb or or, or, or ignorant that freelance artists would have not ha would not have the financial uh, position or have the financial status to pursue illegal actions but that is not the use that is not the uh, only use of an agreement right <laughs> this is a take from a person saying that i don't need an agreement because i don't have the money time to enforce it as a freelance artist this is not really true not really true at all right in the sense that agreements is not used for that only and do not on, do not think that that is the only use and that's why you don't need an agreement right there's so much so much more practical use for an agreement uh, other than taking your actions right so if you have an agreement uh at the very least right at the very least if you don't use it at least it's a it's a thing that protects you from anyone right not necessarily the client anyone that might take legal actions against you right we have to think in that position right yes we 
uh, freelance artists, uh, we artists won't take actions against other people, but we do not know if clients will take actions against us. And it, uh, so I listed a few things, I, and I think they are very practical. It, it, not, it doesn't necessarily involve legal actions uh, of like going to court, filing all this stuff. But simply, you know, you avoid, you can prevent this. You can prevent uh, people from slandering you, slander for not providing satisfying service to your clients, right? If your agreement has already mentioned that this is the uh, quality that you received, this is the specification that you will receive for, for, uh, for, uh, for, the, for the money that you paid to me, the, your client can't say anything else. Your client can't say, oh, you didn't give me this, 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 this. As long as your agreement is very, very detailed in, um, uh, in the specifications, how big it is, uh, it uh, does it have uh, uh, background? Uh, does it is it rendered? You know, I think that's the proper term. Um, is it animated properly? You know, all that stuff, you know. As long as it's there, you you you're fine. They can't really uh, say anything about you. Of course, there's the other thing about being accused of committing fraud and scam by a client. I've seen this on Twitter so many times. And I don't know, a lot of uh, clients uh, have been going around uh, accusing of artists about of this and that. And whether you, if you're asking me whether I can uh, uh, support the view, uh, support what these clients are saying that they are being scammed or being fraud. I can't say for certain, right? Because uh, these things are not uh, simple for the fact that most artists do not have an agreement to rely on. And a lot of times when you see them accusing artists is they they post all the screenshots of the uh, conversations that hey, they had privately. And you do not know whether these conversations are uh are finalized or not or are they still in the negotiation negotiation stage or anything because <laughs> that's that's the problem with conversation have using conversations as a basis of terms and conditions it could be how do you say interpreted interpreted against you not in favor of you, of you. People would misconstrue, uh, would have a misunderstanding of what you said if you didn't put it in a proper formal uh, agreement, right? Then, then you will be in trouble, and you you can't back, you can't argue against this person, right? Because it is re it, most likely in your in your private conversations, the, the words that you use is of not formal language. Yeah, rather casual, maybe vague as well, not clear, not specific. So that's the thing. Uh, they can be twisted, right, against you. Then we, of course, you know, on the other hand, you don't want to be scammed by a client as well. <laughs> you don't want to be scammed by a client. Uh, in terms of like maybe they, they are using your artwork for something else they are using your art, uh, artwork artwork for uh, uh without you need, uh, without crediting you or without uh, paying you the appropriate money but this is a bit more complicated more, more complex situations where it's not just simple artwork you're providing your client it could be a live 2d model that involves a lot of things in regards to copyright and um, you might have missed out on something and because of a of a word uh, of, of missing it out of a word that you wouldn't uh, of a conversation terms and conditions you weren't um, specific about they are using a th using your artwork for other purposes exploitive purposes right so that's that as well Right, there's that as well. Then, of course, the, the last one I've uh, talked about uh, is copyright strikes and claims by your client for your own creation. So, this is on another problem I don't think people really, really think about is that 
Um, if you do not have clear terms of uh, what your what the what are the copyrights that you have uh, that you uh, that that uh, you're going to tr be transferring to your client, and at the end you are still using that artwork for yourself, right? The, if you're the artist and you're still using the artwork for yourself, even after you know delivering the art commission for to your client. For reasons such as most basically advertising, promotion, you're promoting your own uh, 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 own services, putting it in your portfolio, all, all that. What whatever website you have put on, you know, provide uh, you have uh, you're, you're trying to advertise, promote. All websites has the capability, has the features of. Uh, letting users report copyright infringement all right so your clients have ha, there's a there's there's a risk all right i'm not saying high high possible risk of of, of that but there is a risk that you know your client would be malicious and doing copyright infringement strikes against you right and of course, they're they are going to use some sort of conversations, the screenshots or, or something t saying that they do own the rights to to uh, to the art commission and you don't have the right to use that art commission to uh, promote you, promote your own stuff, advertise, uh, do ads, you know, or market yourself, and all that stuff. That is a very, very real possibility that doesn't require legal actions, actual legal actions taken by... Uh, the, you're the clients they have don't have to go through a lawyer to do this they can just go through the uh the social platforms or whatever platforms that they that you have posted uh the artwork on they can do that <laughs> they can do that and a lot of times um did uh finding this is a headache all right especially if you don't have anything to back up that you can say you can do all these things. You can advertise your artwork and all that, uh, even after completing uh, the art commission, even the, after delivering art commission to your client. So there's that. Okay, there's that. Um, I think the this the last two is not that important. It's very specific in terms of uh, uh what happened a few weeks ago. So those are the two things I, I want to highlight. All right, those are the two things I want to highlight, and uh, just for people to understand why why agreements are important. All right, it's it's. Uh, I don't know if if again, I stand from a, a perspective that most people don't see often, right? Because as a lawyer. Uh, with, with the things I've I've been I've been doing, I'm a very, very legal risk adverse person. I I am very how do you say? If possible, I I try to avoid most uh, legal risks that would 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 uh, be a problem in the future. So, for me, making sure that all these things are covered is going to be is going to be a hassle, right? It's going to be a hassle. I'm not saying this is not, it is going to be easy, right? But it's going to be a comfort to you, right? It's going to be a quote unquote an insurance for you, just in case something happens, just in case something bad happens, right? Like accidents don't happen always. It probably happens like only less than ten percent of the time. Uh, we are talking about uh, car accidents or something. Probably not that low, but precautions. Taking precautions. That's the important thing. Okay. So for uh, so that's sad. Now we're going to get into you know if you want to draft your own art commission agreements. So what you should be uh, thinking about. Right. So this is something that I've talked about uh, in my previous streams of what, uh, of of, of uh, uh, in my previous legal investigations on 
why you uh, what's important what terms and conditions is important in a in a in an agreement right so i've divided this into two in a sense that you know artists have things that they want in it as well as clients have things that they want in it right then i have my own oh hey sam welcome welcome sam <laughs> let me give you a shout out quickly I hope the uh, Pokemon was good for you. It was enjoyable. It had a chill time. And uh, yeah, right now we are doing the uh, legal investigations and talking about why it's important to have artist agreements as well as how to draft a, an artist agreement yourself. A simple, simple art, artist agreement yourself so that, you know, you can have something at least. But yes, uh, so yeah, if you if anyone has any legal questions you want to uh, want to ask, feel free to do so, all right? And I believe this is very important to all important to all VTubers, anyone that is in the uh, content creation space, as well as the uh, uh, artists themselves, uh, freelance artists specifically, very important to learn about, I would say. So yeah, uh, now currently. Yeah, it was fine. It's gonna grind up a bit. I see, I see. Ah, uh, I know. Pokemon grind. Used to play it long, long ago. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, what's important for artists? Well, I've listed a couple, few things. Seven in total. But this should suffice in how you're going to draft a agreement, right? The, if if there's anything extra you can put inside right this is just a guideline for you to uh structure your own artist agreement it can be in layman terms it's fine it's it can be not too formal you don't have to like follow exactly the legal language that most contracts use right as long as it is simple it is clear it is specific enough you're good you're good well, this will be great to listen to you gonna post this on youtube later yes uh, i will post this on youtube probably next week yeah most likely next week but i already have one uh, i've already talked about this topic uh, uh last year <laughs> uh, we were just doing a refresher again in a sense because there are new things uh, uh new issues i've brought up to my attention and i think i think i have to cover it which i think i i, I hope they have covered it already telling why people you know Agreements are not just social social agreements, all right? They are very, very much capable of being legally binding, and uh, and such. I think that's the th that's that's the main point of this uh, <laughs> legal investigations. This seminar uh, needs to talk about, right? We can talk for forever about what terms and conditions you should put inside to uh, an artist agreement, but the important thing is understanding why. You would need to have one at least. Okay, music has ended. Let me just repeat it. Uh, oh, cool. I have to give that one a listen then. Uh, listening to either one is fine, but I would say uh, if you can wait until this one, it's much better because, uh, you know, a few months ago, me is probably less, uh, how do you say, eloquent <laughs> in explaining things. But it's all right. Uh, if you do have any specific questions, feel free to ask as well. So anyway, on to the seven things that, you know, I, I'd say artists would be considering about, would be worried worry about and want to cover. So first is the pricing of art commissions. All right. Very simple. You need to, uh, this, I would say that's the most important thing for artists. Why they do art commissions is to, you know, get paid, right? Sorry to read and run, but it is pretty late for me. I will try to wait for this one then. No problem. No problem, man, Sam. I know it's pretty late. It's most likely either 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning for you or, or, or worse. But yeah, go go, uh, go take, take your rest. Do everything you need and uh, see you when I see you, all right? But again, thank you for raiding again, Sam. Yeah, give me money. Yeah, so... What's important for artists is, yeah, I would say number one is money and how, what should you put inside your agreement, right? 
So of course you need to fix a price, right? So that your clients won't say, wait, but I but I thought this is the price that I'm only needed to pay, blah, 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 all that. You don't want that to happen. So yeah, put a price on your agreement. Then, uh, unless of course price is, uh, you know, flexible kind of thing. It depends on the, the complexity or the time period that you need to, to complete this. Uh, so yeah, if for more complicated uh, art commissions, you probably have to be more detailed about it rather than, yeah, just pay me one lump sum and we'll just do whatever it is necessary. There, there could be variations to this and there's something that you need to put inside as well. For the rest of the stream, Jake. All right, good night, Sam. Good night. I have been having stomachs, so go man for the skipping. No problem, no problem. <laughs> Nemo, take care of yourself. And we have, yeah, like, like I said, uh, the the price could fluctuate, could change or add on all that based on complexity, quantity, quality of the art, right? So it's always also good to to have terms that also cover additional charges, right? Of course, initial negotiations, in the initial propo proposals by your client. You have a uh, rough estimation of the uh, price to pay first but if in during the progress of completing the art commission the client suddenly tells you to add more on more details do more work on it which would take more time more effort you know it's very very important to put in a terms and conditions to say that if the client asks for more things you should be able you should have the right to charge more right you don't want your client to come back and say hey why are you charging more i thought this covers it uh, covers as uh, covers uh, this additional works covers the uh, uh sorry sorry uh let me rephrase that the the price that i paid to you covers additional work as well you don't want your client to say something like that okay <laughs> and, and then you know make and then yeah again accuse you of overcharging overcharging them right you don't want things that like that to happen. That's why you put these things in your contract or in the in your agreement. Right. Then second, of course, as the scope of the art commissions, how much details should the art commission or how big the art commission or type of the art commission? This is a simple one. Like I said already, this uh, I would say most artists would have this uh, specific details at uh, being being told, being uh, informed by the client uh is, is very important uh for for more complicated for more complex uh, art commissions this is very necessary right especially uh if it involves a lot of money so you need to make sure um whatever your client is requesting of you it is put in writing and everything in in one document you don't want to have a description of uh, the art commission here and then suddenly next few days um, additional details put over there or oh, like that. yeah do you want you don't want things to be all over the place and then when your client accuses you or something like why 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 did you do this i told you to do this for me but you didn't do it and you'll be in trouble because you don't have an agreement and it's hard to point out or oh, point out that your client didn't say this and yeah, and again, you'd be in trouble. You'd be accused of things, right? And and as I've seen, you know, it's been a year, <laughs> more than a year already. Clients like to accuse artists of of uh, not providing a proper service, not providing a sufficient service, or being accused of scamming them, all that stuff, right? So. Not saying, all right, just to clarify, not saying that clients that do accuse uh, artists or, or for these things is uh, falsely accusing them. I would say probably they have some uh, substantial evidence or substantial proof to say that say those things. But again, um, this sort of disputes between clients and artists can be avoided can't be avoided anyways uh moving on uh right i don't think i have to explain 
why how exactly you need to describe your art commissions because this is not necessarily applicable to everyone uh, if a if a art is com complicated there could be more details you have to put in if it's simple probably you don't need to do much especially if the client tells you to just do whatever you like based on your preference and and such so yeah this is more or less dependent on the uh, on you on the client or the artist and of course third we have the payment method of art commissions so yeah another important thing about money is when you are going getting paid and how you're getting paid right uh this have to be very has to be very clear right this is like one of the few things that in most business contracts or agreements are uh, very very emphasis uh, emphasizes on right how how long uh uh not how long uh when are you going to be paid are you going to be paid at the beginning at the starting of the commission uh, commission work or halfway if there's like a halfway point you get paid for 50 percent or everything is paid uh at the end when when the uh, commission is completed 100 percent completed or is it paid in a weekly monthly basis all that is very important to put right and of course deadlines right you say you have to pay at the very beginning is it immediately or within how many days the client has to pay all that stuff right or uh so the and the uh, second thing how is it going to be paid are you going to do online transfer are you going to do some sort of a credit card payment paypal stripe whatever it is that you have online wallet even possible so that as well i don't think cash is a is a a, uh, a thing uh is common uh, unless you're like living in the same area or something but i wouldn't even recommend using cash because you know safety and all that so yeah important to list out all this as well and of course we have the uh purpose of art commission to use by client the fourth ca talk category right this is a very hotly disputed <laughs> uh topic and a lot of times artists and clients have the problem of understanding this because it's very much uh related to copyright laws and i understand not everyone knows what copyright laws and how it is being uh, how, how does it work and all that but uh it's still nonetheless important and if possible try to learn it yourself I can't go and uh, explain this to every artist. Uh, I can't really explain this in in depth in the sense that uh, it would be helpful. Oh, uh, it won't it won't. Uh, how do you say? Complicate you even further. But this is something that you have put to put inside. At the very least, you have to understand how copyright works. Uh, at least the very basics of it. Uh, so you. So yeah, uh, why is that? How how what do you what, uh, how do you say this? What you can do with a artwork, right? As a client or as a artist, you need to specify that at the very least. All right, so I'm going to explain this in very simple terms. You need to understand what you can still use as an artist. Uh, with the art commission work can you still use it for promotion can you use still use it for advertising can you still use it for your own personal uh, uh, commercial purposes all that as an artist and of course the other side is what can the client do with your art commission work right uh, can you use it for commercial purposes to what extent that commercial purpose is, is right can they change it can they modify it can they uh, monetize it uh, can they sell copies of it uh, all that you have to like 
you know, mansion. Then we have cost. The second thing is ethics, morality, and legality, right? I think this is something people also have to learn about. It's not necessary copyright. It's more or less uh, what you what you wish your client would be able to do with, with the uh, art commission work. Uh, a lot of times. Uh, People don't want to make art commission. Don't want to do. Don't want to take on artworks that involves politics, religions, and uh, possibly use for immoral purposes as well as illegal purposes. You know, criminal stuff and all that. So this is something if I would say artists is worried about, and I think uh, they they are worried about it in terms of uh, having clients use artworks for AI yeah so we'll talk a bit about it in a sec but yeah uh, recent issues has been brought up this is one of them being the AI theft as well as uh, not letting <laughs> other artists to use your artwork as reference <laughs> a bunch of weird stuff man this I don't know a lot of the drama a lot of the controversy come, comes out of the uh um art community but anyways that's a conversation to be had uh not now so moving on copyrights of art commission so yeah this is also something uh, uh i would say yeah very very much specific on copyrights uh so simply put art commission whether you, you want your art commission to be you want to have your client able to modify your art commission like i just said just now and whether you whether this copyright do you retain re retain this copyright or do you transfer it to the client right uh i'll try to explain this a bit is yes uh if you do not mention this right if you do not mention cop whether the copyrights are transferred to the artist or the client uh from a uh from the legal cases that I've seen, that I've, I've looked on, the general rule is that an art commissioner, an artist who does work for a client, the artwork is assumed to be transferred to the client. The copyrights, you know, the ownership of the artwork is automatically assumed that it is transferred to the client, all of it. If you don't talk about, if you don't cover this uh, at all in your terms and conditions, all of the rights, you know, well, however the client wants to use the, a, uh, the, the art commission is up to them because they now own the copyright. So you have to be make sure whether this is a, something that you are okay with or not. You, yes, or that you have... You are all right with them. We oui. someone requested le français accent. Uh, apologize. Uh, I will. Trois, deux, un. Sorry, Vedi. Um, I will. <laughs> I will can't uh, accept the redeems now, uh, because I'm doing something uh, semi-serious. So I'll ref I'll refund you the uh, the the channel points later. All right. Apologies for that. But welcome, Vedi. Welcome. So yeah, uh, going back on the uh, copyrights. Definitely, definitely should try to do that at least. Think about uh, in the sense that do you want to give everything to your client or is there something that you want to retain, you want to have a say in it or not? So yeah, that's something that you, you probably have to th think about if you want to cover. And of course, this is also the part where uh, most likely you don't want to get you want these terms and conditions in it because you don't want your client later onwards to do something as in as like doing a copyright strike against you or copyright claim against you or whatever artwork you're doing right that is the main purpose of this of having a copyright terms and conditions i'm serious very all right thank you for your understanding very so that's that right 
then very important. All of these things I, 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 I'm, I'm talking about already, it's very important why artists should have these terms and conditions covered, right? If not, only headaches is going to be what you have going to be having in the future, right? And we have completion, right? Uh, completion in a sense, uh, yes, you have been given a task to complete an art commission, but how? And all that, and is there any sort of a in between obligation, in between things that you have to do for your client while you're working on your art commission, right? So, what should you indicate that both parties have done obligations, so, right? Maybe uh, the quality, the deadline of doing the car art commission, um, the uh, giving notice as to what is the pr progress of the art commission, any obligations to uh, update the client in a specific manner or not, all that stuff, very important, okay? Because uh, as I've, I've heard, I've, I've seen in, uh, you know, uh, things being argued in Twitter is that, oh, the artist is not reporting their updates to their clients and yeah that seems legit right this seems like a problem it, it, it if it takes too long uh quite some time you should be informed of what the pro pro progress of the uh, art commission but sometimes that could be the client being uh insensitive right that could be we have to think both sides all right they have to think both sides it could be that uh, the artist really had some sort of problem updating the client personal issues or the uh, the reason is due to how complicated or how complex the uh, art commission is it could be all that reasons so to avoid this sort of you know accusations being brought up by clients Again, you have to put this in writing to say whether you will be giving updates to your client regularly. And if if you are going to give updates to your client regularly, how regularly? Monthly? Weekly? You know? Or six months uh, and an update or something? Anything, all right? Put this in so that if, a, if, a, if there's a dispute coming up in the future, you have something to tell them. No. Uh, I told you I only be giving you updates on a weekly basis or monthly basis, blah blah blah, like that. And in what style, right? So that you won't be accused, you won't be like brought up in public saying that you are doing something wrong, which you weren't intentionally doing anything wrong, right? So yeah, that's also something why I am trying to you know give reasons as to all of this, okay? Then we have. Oh, on the topic of art and legal stuff, I once did an art, didn't put a signature on that. But it's my bad for the most part. Then a few months, someone copy pasted my drawing and said took credit for themselves to get some advertising and whatnot. So the question, can I do some actions on that? Uh, again, uh, I don't think whether or not you have a signature on your artwork, it's uh, something you have to uh, really, really uh, consider too much. Uh, as because the main point, right, the main purpose that you want to do that is to show ownership to what you have created. Uh, having a signature on your artwork, it doesn't necessarily say that it is your artwork. It can be argued, right? You can, anyone could put a, a signature on an artwork and say that it is theirs. So there are probably more concrete ways, uh, foolproof ways to prove ownership. You know, like having the actual original uh, file of the uh, artwork, if it's a digital form. So maybe if you are like, if you've created it using Photoshop, you have you should have the original, you know, PSD file, and there should be quote unquote digital signatures as to, as to showing when it was created, the date, from where it was created from what device it was created all that stuff probably should be inside that original file right so if you can produce something like that then yeah it, that would be more better and 
they can't really refute the the imposter you know the scammer or the forger can't really refute that claim as long as you have that but of course if you're asking me what sort of actions you can take that depends on where this person has post posted this artwork right and i would say if, if it's a social platform whether it's uh twitter uh facebook even <laughs> instagram uh deviantart i don't know how many people are still using deviantart after that fiasco i believe all of them have a venue for you to report copyright infringement right you have you don't have to like actually hire lawyers or anything as long as you just you know, you know you have the proof to to show that you are the owner of this artwork and you didn't give permission to this person to distribute your artwork or use it for any purposes then yeah those are the venue i would say those are the actions you can take practically take against these people who are using your artwork without your permission so yeah hopefully that answers you eddie right going back to this one the last category which i think artists would find to uh, to uh, to be important to them in putting in, in their agreement is the termination right termination so i'm not sure how this co how common this is but it is a very possible thing that uh, either the client or the artist will do right there's always a possibility halfway through you decide not to continue with with this a uh, transaction artist doesn't want to work with the client uh, for whatever reason or the client doesn't work with the artist for whatever reason could be personal could be uh, something out of control you know not enough money not enough time whatever it is there is a possibility the you know tr the the uh, transaction ends earlier than expected so you need to find out what happens is there a a procedure for it to, to make sure, you know, both parties exit out of the uh, transaction without any... <laughs> uh, taking it personally, alright? So to speak. You're welcome, Betty. You're welcome. Uh, how do I say that? In French. I, I don't think I've learned that. <laughs> In French. Uh, anyways. Uh, so yeah, termination. So we need to find out when you can terminate, right? Uh, do do you want to allow anyone to terminate or not? And if you terminate, what happens when you terminate is uh, do you still provide the client the art commission, right? Even if it's not completed, do you still give it to them or you don't give it to them? Uh, is there any sort of refund uh, to the client for not uh, providing a uh, how do you say the art commission to them or providing a incomplete art commission right full or partial right all that also very important and also yeah down here as well if do you do you still deliver the art commission regardless if it's terminated right then of course you can you should always say that after this is the basic basic contract uh, terms and conditions whenever you want to terminate and uh, when you do terminate all the things the pr termination procedures have been all done you should always have something uh, a sentence to say that uh, no one has any legal obligations between each other anymore after this termination right you know uh, we shouldn't be pursuing any actions against each other anymore that is the purpose of uh, that, that, that is the purpose of having a termination clause, right? Other than specifying how you terminate. But the most important is what happens at the end, afterwards you terminate. Is there still some sort of obligation between each other? Uh, maybe you want to keep this uh, secret, you know, put a, some sort of like brief NDA thing, non-disclosure kind of thing to tell, say that. Um, Clients, uh, the, uh, either the client or the artist shouldn't share any of this uh, requested art, art commission public to people. You know, could be something like that. Could be something like that. And uh, yeah, we don't. And also, 
maybe maybe you don't want the uh, uh, client to talk bad about you for some reason that's a class you can put in but i would not recommend although i understand you know artists are afraid that uh, are afraid of uh, clients bad mouthing the artists uh but it's very difficult to control and uh, if it's something that is abstract subjective right uh, saying that their artwork is uh not of a good quality or something like that it's uh, it's not up to their satisfaction because it's very subjective up to interpretation different people think what what is a good art all right different people think what's a good art uh standard of a good art so yeah that's termination <laughs> okay because uh this is what i'm saying in the sense of like uh what's important to the client and for what's important to artists so far all this stuff i have not used any sort of uh legal language to tell you why this is important why all this this is all things i i assume right i'm an artist as myself i i assume this is something most artists are concerned with right and it's always a concern right i don't think they only think about these problems think think about these issues from time to time it's always in your mind you know the price of the art commission is always in your mind what sort of art you're doing is always in your mind the payment method you know when to pay how to pay the uh what's the uh, art commission used for right and the copyrights involved with it you know whether you, trans you are going to transfer it or keep a few to yourself all that stuff and how the art commission is completed very basic stuff but in a way i can tell you is i can think like that not just because i'm an artist of course uh but also because i'm a lawyer and lawyers are supposed to be trained to understand what our clients want so this is something uh you could say maybe it's not always in your mind but it's always in my mind <laughs> whatever i'm doing it's always in my mind whether there's actual you know contractual relations with people uh even a simple friendship <laughs> simple friendship relationships uh anything to do with other people it's these things that i consider right what people put emphasis on what people put an importance on when we're dealing with other people interacting with other people so uh and i would say this is a good general advice you know when when whoever you're you're, you're talking to or you're trying to interact with or be friending always think about what's important to them <laughs> right of course we have clients as well but clients are less there are less things that clients are, are thinking about, right? Uh, but not to say that it's not important as well. Uh, artists also has to find out what their clients want. But they, it overlaps. Although it's more or less, it overlaps, but it's in the opposite of what they want, right? They probably want to pay later, <laughs> right? Like right now, price of art commissions, they probably want to pay less, or they don't want to pay too much, or they don't don't want to complicate themselves with with paying how 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 to pay something for how to pay the art commission, right? For me, for, from how I've uh, how I've dealt with a lot of clients, the the most important thing for clients, whoever they are, wherever they are, is simple, easy, quick no issues <laughs> no issues simple quick whatever they want they want it as in as they can they want it as soon as possible as easy as possible so yeah so again we have pricing time deadline of course you know clients want to have art commissions as soon as possible and they want to of course and as well they want to know what's the progress in the art commission how how much uh, the the artist has done would they be updating them yeah so that is something as well clients want to 
be updated on on the progress and it also, of course sometimes not always uh, clients will also think about when they can terminate uh, the uh, transaction All right they want to find out if they can terminate or not as well as whether they will get a refund if they terminate earlier when how much all that so that's clients but important most importantly artists needs to figure out so many things so that <laughs> the artist needs to cover a lot of things so that they don't get their butts uh stabbed <laughs> or backstab however you want to say it they want to don't want to be in a in a situation that uh it's very difficult to get out is how i can say it. the only thing i can say all right moving on then of course you know uh if uh, if anyone that is in chat um you, uh, the this document is f you know free for anyone to 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 look at if you want to use this as a um reference no problem but again you only use this as a reference uh amongst many many other references you can look for i'm sure there are prominent uh artists that have um that do have artist agreements themselves they probably have uh details terms and conditions that i haven't covered so yeah uh don't just listen to me or don't just use my own my, my stuff here uh so definitely do your own research but again don't complicate yourself too much uh draft uh draft something put it in put it in put it draft an agreement put everything in it right then you know you don't have to immediately use it take your time right take your time to slowly draft build it up you know see if it's to your liking if it covers what you you are afraid of you know in at the same time you can still take on art commission works of course right this is not an easy thing i don't assume anyone any any person that doesn't have a legal background to think that drafting an agreement is easy it will take time right of course yeah i have a sample if people want to see the sample but uh, it's uh really just for reference because my art commission over here uh, which i have just recently updated a few days ago uh is to my own preference right to how i take on art commission works uh it's mainly because you know uh, uh the big difference i would say mo uh, i'm different from most artists is that i'm <laughs> i'm not an i'm not a professional artist i mostly do take on art commissions that are pretty simple general that's why they are cheap as well <laughs> and i didn't use the uh, normal payments as most people do uh, the payments i accept are just gift subs yes you heard it twitch gift subs they are based uh, this that's the only thing i accept so why couple of reasons is that um it avoids problems of uh, unfair pricing between different countries different regions right uh everyone would be paying the same uh same pricing in terms of subs right and assume most people you know don't have a problem uh using this as a as a as a payment method right because the gift subs are quite reasonable reason price reasonably priced right one gift subs uh, for you people from the united states is i think five us dollars and for gift sub in malaysia it's eight ringgit so it's roughly it's actually yeah it adjusts to to the gift shop is a good good place to adjust all this different pricing from uh from different countries right and as well as the uh, security of it right there's no problem with or uh, if i'm using pay uh, is it safe to use paypal or is it used safe to use some sort of like online trans transaction or credit card no everything is every pay all the payment is gone going through twitch and going uh, there they will be keeping that money that's why uh, the unfortunate problem with this 
The unfortunate problem with this payment method is that I have to tell people that it is non-refundable. Right? As, as, as I mentioned here, it is non-refundable. Because there's no way for me to refund this money. And it is, it is not immediately uh, uh, transferable to me. Right? Twitch has to pay me before, uh, before I can do anything. But yeah, this uh, these terms and conditions, it's, it's not long. It's not long, right? Whether uh, this is like what? Two and a half, three and a half page of, of terms and conditions. It doesn't have to be complicated, right? Doesn't have to be complicated. It can be worded very simply and big, big font size as well. Okay. But I have to clarify though, if, if you see templates, right, uh, in the sense that people want you to use it and just modify it as you as you like, really, really make sure you understand what they are used for. Because uh, templates, they don't tell you why those terms and conditions are in there. Uh if I were to make a template, this is not a template, okay? Uh, for for anyone that is watching right now, this is not a template. Right? Over here, the art commission agreement. This is not my personal agreement. Uh, this is not my own agreement. It's my own agreement is over here. This is a sort of like generic sample reference for people to look at. It's not a template, right? Don't use it as a template. Uh, it's... In any case, if there are people who make templates, make sure you know what it is, what they, what it is, right? What it what does it cover? What it doesn't cover? If there's any flaws in it and all that stuff, yeah, you need to make sure to, not to just copy paste things. All right, I wouldn't rec even recommend yeah copy pasting anything over here. Again, to clarify this seminar is to teach people to draft their own agreement not to provide a template for people because every artist has different needs different preferences and worries and uh, fears and all that stuff right so this is just for you to start with to understand how what are important terms in in an agreement and how it is structured right an agreement, how how an agreement is structured, is always um, in a very natural, very uh, logical manner, right? So we always like 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 I have put in on the uh, from one to seven, right? Even even if you don't need to look at the uh, actual sample that I have here, this main categories of a uh, things that an artist needs to find out i've organized them in a in a natural logical manner like chrono even like in in a sense chronologically logical as well right you always the first at the very beginning you know, the things that you talk about are price what is the art how it is being paid when is it going to be paid right then what is the purpose? What 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 the art commission is used for? How can it be used? What are the copyrights of it? This is like main part of the, uh, not the main part, the middle stages of the, uh, of the thought process, you know, of of uh, of the commission. Then at the end, completion, right? Completing the art commission. Then of course, this is at the last one. Termination is more or less for events outside of the uh, natural progression of the uh, art commission so assuming if possible some uh, that you want to cancel the art commission so this is the topic that you have to cover this is the uh, terms you have to cover so yeah well not only this makes helps you read through an agreement it helps you helps everyone un easily understand uh, how everything goes 
from A to Z, right? How all the entire thing is needs to be progressed. And that way, it makes it very easy to draft your agreement. Right. So, yeah, um, I would not go through the entirety of my sample, but only the uh, highlighted things that I've previously highlighted, as well as recently highlighted as well. But yeah, so, you know, put on, uh, uh, always have something like, a, like over here, pricing of the art commission. The completion of the art commission shall be done by the artist within seven days from the date of this agreement, full payment or full payment by the client. Hearing after referred to as the deadline. Right. You put this, this is more or less, uh, how do I say this? The pricing of the art commission is, it's always to tell people when to pay and how much to pay. Over here, you probably should put in like, yeah, on the second one, you you need to put in how much it is, you know, put in the numbers. 100 USD is just a sample, okay? Then upon completion of the art commission, upon work beginning on the art commission from the day of this, this is, I, I put a lot, like I highlight this because there are ways to word this. Either you pay upon completion or you pay at the beginning of the art commission or from the date of this agreement, right? When, when both parties have agreed, uh, when, when this agreement uh, is going to, to start, you know, all that. Samples, they are really, really samples. We're just telling you ways how to, to draft an agreement. That's why I'm telling you. If anyone, any artist is looking at this, this is just a sample to refer to. If you copy paste this without changing anything, it won't make sense at all. It won't make sense at all. Right. Client shall bitly play the artist for additional. Yeah, so this one, I haven't highlighted this. Like I previously said, if if the artist needed to provide any additional work you know because of additional request you can tell them you an artist can tell them that, they, that if to do that you need to pay extra and the uh, most you know reasonable way to do that is to give them a notice uh, how when uh, up to you up to the artist shouldn't be restricted it can be through a direct message on twitter it could be through email however it is you like to all right good night rave good night thank you for being here see you next time all right so yeah uh there's that of course somebody over here redeemed the british oh no me, activating in five S four three <laughs> i'm sorry seven. Uh, I guess you didn't hear me when I, when I talked to Betty, but uh, because this is a semi-serious uh, uh, stream, so I'm sorry, but I can't, you know, uh, uh, how do you say, honor redeems right now, but I will refund uh, anyone who has, you know, redeemed uh, during this session. But yeah, apologies, Rafe, apologies. Uh, so, yeah, continuing on this, where, what I highlighted... It's all good. No, no, it's okay. Thank you for understanding, Rafe. For avoidance of doubt, the artist shall not accept any part payment of the full payment, additional payment without prior consent by the artist. So this is something that I added extra, which, you know, artists may find useful, is that you don't want your client to suddenly pay you when you didn't ask them to pay you, okay? <laughs> uh, it's like uh, they told you to do something, uh, to, to, to they, they requested you to do an art commission and you let them know this is the price right but they suddenly before you before you agree to everything they suddenly pay you that money right 
and i i understand it must this might be a problem so if if, if, it, is, if it is right you can always put this here right so that to to avoid people from suddenly i pay you now now you must do this for me then you'll be in a predicament right you'll be in a predicament to, to reject them especially if it, if if it's not possible to refund the money to them right and of course we have payment method this is i don't think we really need to discuss this extension of deadline of the art commission so this is something extra i added inside in the sense that you know um if somehow your client wants you to do extra work most of the time probably that's that's the case you can't expect yourself to complete the uh, original art commission within the same deadline right so if that happens i would say it's fair for you to put in something like this put it, to put in the terms and conditions like this to tell them well because you've requested me to do extra work the deadline would have to be increased and how much how many days is that up to you right i put in an example of only seven days it could be longer right could be longer uh, seven days for each request but it could be longer could be 14 days could be a month whatever your preference is we of course you know we have the purpose of the art commission you know list this out and also i've seen a lot of our uh, art commissioners in the art commissioner, we have seen a lot of freelancer freelance artists put different pricing on personal and commercial use you definitely can do that you definitely can do that uh what i would recommend if you do if you do like put a different pricing for personal and commercial is to simply have commercial use as an extra payment rather than put it in the lump sum payment together with uh whatever the uh, uh our client is asking you to do right to make it simple right make it simple not like oh well, no uh, because of commercial commercial use then yeah and you always be clear right always be clear that the uh art commission is for the art commission and commercial use is extra payment so yeah uh, i don't think i want to get into all this too much you can read this on your own i'm sure i'm very sure you know i haven't worded all these things in a too complicated manner but yeah um but if people are wondering if let's say um there are the terms all right at the end yes you have an agreement you have an agreement all the all of this is covered but still still either you or the uh the client has breached the contract uh, has breached breached the agreement for for some reason right so what happens then well uh i put up in here as well in the termination here right other, uh, other than the an agreement being willfully terminated the agreement can also be terminated when someone breaches the contract all right and of course if money has been paid to the artist yeah it's going to be difficult to to ask for that money back right if they don't have a refund policy or even if they have a refund policy and they don't refund you you know hence the breach of contract they, the only other thing i can suggest as a solution to this is you know blacklist publicly blacklist uh either is vice versa right either the artist or the client that's one way to you know resolve kind of resolve this situation you won't get back what you have lost right either you you didn't get your art commission or you didn't get back your money again it, that is uh, an unfortunate thing because 
uh, yes, most likely the legal act, the only solution to that solution to that is actually taking legal actions against the people. Of course, for practical purposes, that is not possible, right? Which I understand. Again, I understand that it's not something freelance artists or clients are able to pursue because these are these aren't like tens of thousands or even more kind of a, a service that's being being done, right? Probably, probably there is, but most most time probably not. So, yeah, uh, at the very least, if you have put something like yes, you can publicly blacklist them. So in the event, right, uh, you do want to, you know, bring this up to the community, to the people around you, that, to let them know that this person has done something unethical, they have, they have not uh, provided the, uh, they did not perform what they have promised, they have not paid what they have promised, all that, hence, you allow they, they, with this agreement with the terms and conditions you're telling people that you allow them to take actions that would more or less uh be unethical if it was not agreed on right i always think that like um uh, when a when a uh, client brings up pr uh, problems disputes they had with the artist into public space is very unethical it's very unethical, especially, you know, uh, most of us are private people and a lot of times artists, uh, most, this is their bread and butter, right? If you accuse artists of, you know, scamming you, frauding you and all that stuff, it's, uh, it's really not good. It's co going to affect your reputations a lot a lot right it's very hard to recover the trust that you are you have uh, uh trust from other people that have given to you right so that's it you could also put in again i i haven't put, i don't think i have a nda terms conditions here you can always tell say that your clients or the artist cannot say anything about this uh, regardless of the status of the agreement uh, whether it is terminated whether it is breached or not whether um, whether the uh, commission was not completed right you could always opt to say no one can blacklist a anyone right that is also a thing you can do is it a trick? bit rate okay oh no is it looks green there's no f drop frames for me here so yeah uh over here it's good it's good all right so in any case in any case uh i believe that is it uh, yeah that's it that's it the short short uh seminar today uh well, not really short. It's almost two hours now. Uh, but the usual. Um, try, uh, I try to sum up a lot of information. And I hope uh, people found this to be informative. And I do hope people understand where I'm coming from. Right? Uh, because I'm not saying that uh, you're bad for not having an agreement. I'm just saying... You're not safe for not having an agreement. And I want people to be safe. I want people to understand the how useful um, agreements are. Not, uh, of course, in, in the uh, art commission context, but also for a lot of different situations. And I don't want people to uh, be misinformed that agreements are useless because they are not enforceable. They are not... Uh, how do you say they don't have the money or time to enforce the agreement so that they, they don't think there's a need to have an agreement and all everything that they do should 
just continue on relying on people's good faith. You know, if <laughs> for me, I mean, uh, if you are able to have a lot of trust in your clients, a lot of trust in your artists, then fine, you continue on doing everything based on good faith. But for me, regardless, regardless if that person is your brother, your father, your mother, your wife, your husband, or whatever it is, always have some sort of a agreement, right? Always have some sort of agreement so that people don't don't say they didn't say whatever they promised to you, right? Agreements are... It doesn't cost you, right? <laughs> it doesn't cost you money to, to draft it. You don't have to hire a lawyer to draft this, all right? That's, that's, that's another thing. You, you don't have to spend money to draft this. You just need... You just need a document where everything can be seen, where everything is agreed upon. Uh, it, it avoids so much problems and it can help protect you in so many situations. Anyways, um, that's that's my, my uh, what I can t talk about about this. I'm going to see if there's any questions. Uh, I don't think there's any questions. Any questions in the chat? I'll be, you know, hanging around for five minutes like that. And if not, we'll call, call the session, call the seminar a complete success. <laughs> At least for me. I don't know. I do hope I... I, I don't... I do... I, I hope I don't sound too... Aggressive? I don't know. But I, I I, really, really want people to understand that uh, this is for your own good. Uh, right. Uh, let me, <laughs> you'll be hearing weird sounds because I'm using Opera GX. Uh, but, uh, let me just do some stuff. Right. If if you don't have any questions related to the artist agreement, it's fine as well. If you have questions regarding anything else, uh, any legal matter, I'm also fine answering. Uh, I'm just going to be refunding the uh, redeems that people just did. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think uh, for those that are watching the VOD, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Avedi, you have a question? Is Arsene okay? Okay. Vedi asked a question, but uh, <laughs> I think it's a joke. Anyway, so yeah, thank you to those that are watching in the VOD. If you like what you see, maybe give a like. Also, you have something you want to ask. You have some opinions as well. Do put it in your in the comments below. And uh, if you like to see more of this type of content, do subscribe. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Anyways, take care. Stay hopeful, but be critical. Bye bye.